Good afternoon, everybody. So I think we left off on, I think we did this example last class where we were looking for the X destroyed. We have our system is the water and the iron basically included. So then and it's well insulated. So these no energy is crossing our boundary if our boundary is the big boundary there. Okay, so then neglecting kinetic potential, we just have change in microscopic point of energy, which is iron plus the water. So the change in the iron plus the change in the water, we have incompressible substances of iron and water. So water is assumed incompressible because we're not near uh, where it will change from liquid or start changing from liquid to vapor. So when we calculate the final temperature, we got to make sure that's still, you know, below 100 degrees Celsius. So we're not getting to that point where we're changing phase. Then we would have to use states in state one and state two. Okay, but so we have, we can have, we have a mass of the iron. We can get our specific heats. We have initial temperature of each. So then we can get the final temperature. Okay. Uh, then X destroyed, we use the XG balance, closed system. So again, there's no heat, work, or mass crossing our boundary. So there's no X, just uh, XG in or out. Okay, we, so we have X destroyed, and then the change in XG of our system. Okay, so the X destroyed just ends up being change in XG of our system, which is just the mass. Oh we would need to do um, both of them, right? So that would be delta X iron plus delta X water. So that's iron and then water. Okay, separating the water and the iron, you're adding just the, the changes of XG of each. Okay, and so you got to calculate the non-flow XG change of the iron and the non-flow XG change per unit mass of the water. Okay. All right, so now changing to control volumes, the XG balance. We have heat, work, mass that can cross, X destroyed, and then any change. So this is the transient. If it was filling or emptying, like say, our control volume. Um, and then this substitutes in for the, the different sections. So this is our work here. Here's from mass flow rate, X destroyed, and same there. But if we have the rate form, here's from heat, right? All this in that parentheses is the work useful which is work minus the work on the surroundings. So this is the work or power, I should say, power in the surroundings. So that's work useful, work minus work surroundings, power minus power in the surroundings. And then we have mass flow rate carrying in or out extra G. We have our X destroyed. And then we have any change in extra G with respect to time inside our control line. Here kind of shows simplifications that we can take for these steady flow or steady state devices, right? So, you know, turbines, compressors, nozzles, diffusers, pipes, pumps, heat exchangers, um, that if it's steady state, that right term went to zero, right? DX, DT, okay, that's this one. All right, then the other thing that happens a lot is single stream, one inlet, one outlet, right? We can have Mass flow rate one is equal to mass flow rate two. That's that one inlet, one outlet. Now, if we have two inlets, one outlet, or two outlets, 
one inlet, we can't simplify it to this, right? We have to do our conservation math and start and apply that with the summation there, okay? Um, so by having one inlet, one outlet, we get to just have one mass flow rate and then our change in flow exergy here. Um, oh, the other thing that got simplified from the last slide is the work on the surroundings. So a lot, all these kind of devices, we typically are making our DVDT to zero, so we don't have that that dead state pressure times DVDT there. Okay. Vexstroid. So then the change in flow exergy is just this that we defined um, in an earlier slide. Okay. And then the other thing that we can simplify is this single stream version right here. If we divide it by mass flow rate, each of these sections, we get a per unit mass. So we get that lowercase q, okay? We get lowercase w, we get just the change in flow xg without the mass flow rate, and then the little x destroyed, okay? Just like we did, could do that with a closed system or one inlet, one outlet on an open system. We divide by mass. All right, here we have the case of reversible work. Okay, this one is the special case of where we're looking for reversible work. Okay, this is when we we're looking for this case of reversible work. It's the X destroyed we set to zero. Okay, um, so this we have. We set our work in the exergy balance to work reversible, and then the X destroyed is zero, okay? So when we apply that, we're not even applying a work useful. We're looking for what this process would be if it's work reversible, okay? So we're taking the equation here, let's say, and reducing it to a work, what that work reversible would look like. All right, so then that means x to zero, so that cancels, and we're just left with work reversible, okay? If you have an adiabatic system, this, this term goes away, and then you just have mass flow rate and change in flow exergy for that reversible work. Even if it's a turbine, let's say, because the turbine has work out, right? This work reversible is what would that work of the turbine be if it was done reversibly from state one to state two, okay? so because the X destroyed is zero, we're saying it's reversible. We're saying, okay, we have a reversible turbine from state one to state two. Okay, so the reversible represents the maximum work for work producing device, so that's like a turbine, and the minimum work for work consuming, so that's like a compressor or pump, right? All right, so to bring this with chapter seven, we had, um, work, you might have said reversal, but it's it's kind of like the isentropic, right? Because work isentropic, because isentropic isentropic is adiabatic and reversible from chapter seven. So that means it goes, your process goes from one to two S because it's isentropic, right? S is being held constant. In this chapter eight, work reversible, it's not isentropic. It just has no irreversibilities, but you're going from state one to state two actual, okay? so that does not require it to be adiabatic. All it requires is, it, is that it's reversible, okay? So it goes from one to two S, okay? Or sorry, one to two actual. So between the same end states as the actual device, but just reversibly. All right, second law efficiency. Uh, excuse me. Yep. So, um, 
I was basically gonna say is is how do why is it why is it uh why is X destroyed? Why is that equals so in this case, because it's X more like in this the X destroyed, so X destroyed is X is destroyed, yeah. Is T naught S gen, right? So we're just saying S gen is zero. It's no irreversibility. It's reversible. So we're looking, this is more like the theoretical case, what we would like to achieve. What is our goal or the max we can achieve? So for a turbine, this would be the max we could achieve is, let's say if we're looking at a work producing device, we calculate the work reversible. This is the max we can achieve for that turbine, okay? Even if it has heat transfer, we're saying this is the max because without, if it's reversible, it has no irreversibilities, so that's our max. If we're a work consuming device, like a compressor or pump, the reversible with no irreversibilities, the reversible work will be the le least we have to con uh, put into that compressor to go from state one to state two actual, okay? All right, second law of efficiencies. We showed this in the earlier slides, the last class, but um, we have expended. So that's kind of what you're putting in to your device. Recovered is what you're getting out, right? In exergy, and then destroyed is that difference. You know, what you're, you're, what you're losing, okay? Okay, so you can set up your exergy balance, and I'll show this, and you can just look at the terms and be like, oh, here's expended, here's recovered, here's destroyed, and create all these equations for all these devices, or devices that aren't even being shown here, just by knowing the exergy balance for that device, okay? So the X destroyed is very easy. On this one, you just see this is all the X destroyed, and then they just have kept the, um, expanded right here. So you can think about this turbine. If you set up the exergy balance, you would have the expanded, so you would be supplying flow exergy to it and getting work out of that turbine. So that's the exergy recovered, the work potential recovered, or compressor. You are ex um, expending some work, which is the change in enthalpy, okay? and you're recovering flow exergy because you're putting energy into that fluid because okay? you're compressing it. Okay? Heat exchanger, you have exergy in the hot side, and it's recovered by the cold side. All right, so then second law analysis, some quick example of a open system. Here's a turbine, right? We have um, our, actually let's make their boundaries not correct. Let's do our little bit bigger boundary here. So extra balance, steady state device, so dx dt goes away. Um, we're looking in this case, they, this example wants the reverse work, okay? So we're solving for the reverse work. Okay, so this is zero because it's steady state. This is zero because we're looking for the reversible case. Okay, that means we set the work equal to work reversible, okay? We have what's going in, we have flow exergy going in, okay? We have flow exergy going out. And then the heat goes to zero because extra transfer by heat is one minus T naught over TK. So that's the heat transfer, the temperature at which that heat transfer is crossing your boundary. And right here, that's crossing the boundary at T zero. So we would have uh, one minus one 
So that makes the heat trans the exergy by heat transfer. That doesn't mean there isn't heat there is heat transfer, but the work potential of that heat transfer is zero. Okay. So then the work reversible, we're just left with mass flow rate times the change in flow exergy. If we substitute in our flow exergy neglect kinetic potential, we just have this. Okay. If we wanted the actual work or useful work out of that steam turbine because there's no work being done on the surroundings. So the actual work is equal to the useful work in this case. And steady state, so that means energy in is equal to energy out. We're carrying in enthalpy, carrying out enthalpy. We have heat, we have work. So this would be our equation for our actual work so, or our useful work. And we can use that to get our second law efficiency, okay? X destroyed, you can also get X destroyed just from these two relationships, because X G is the work potential. So the maximum work we can get out is reversible. What we actually get out is the work out, the actual. The difference is what that work potential that's lost or destroyed. Okay, so that's the X destroyed, because X G is work potential. That's the best we can do. We we Work out is less than that, so the difference is what was destroyed. So, if since exergy equals zero when it's reversible, so the work rev out would equal the regular work out. If it's if if for both your work out and your work reversible were done reversibly. So this one, in this case, has irreversibilities. So when you calculate this work right here from conservation energy, you're going to get a value. And it includes irreversibilities. This one does not. Okay, from here, from this, when we calculate it from the extra balance. Okay. So there are two different works. This is the actual case that's occurring by looking at the energy terms. This is the work that's occurring theoretically from the exergy balance if X destroyed was zero. This one, X destroyed is greater than zero. So if you were doing entry balance, this is different than this one. If you did entry, if you did exergy balance on the actual case, it's different than the reversible case. I see, yeah. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. Yep. All right, so then we went through, we did all these, we, we talked about second law efficiency, reversible work, we defined what exergy was, we looked at non-flow exergy and developed an equation for that, flow exergy developed that, at heat transfer, the work potential or exergy from heat transfer work. We have mass carrying in or out exergy. We looked at X destroyed. And then we started applying and balancing exergy. So looking at a full system of it. Okay, so that.